Animeric Carbons podcast. We're going to talk about what an animeric carbon is. We probably will not talk about what it's not, though. <laughs> Podcasting now. Dang. So I know that you were really missing seeing this horribly long looking Aldos, um, but we're going to talk about when you go from a Fisher projection to a Hayworth projection, what I mean by forming uh, an alpha anomer versus a beta anomer. Okay, we know that the hydroxyl group on C5 is going to interact with the carbonyl that in an aldose is on C1. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove my hydroxyl group because this oxygen from C5 is going to become part of the ring. This is the oxygen in the ring. Now, I can break either this carbonyl bond or I can break this carbonyl bond to form my cyclic hemiacetal and you're gonna get different results each time. So let's start by breaking what would be on the bottom. And we can form our cyclic hemiacetal. Now, when I break that um, side of the carbonyl, notice that my hydroxyl group, this is my anomeric carbon, carbon one, my hydroxyl group is pointed up or above the plane. Okay. So let's reset that really quick. Oops. So in order to get the beta form, which we just showed, we broke this bond. Let's go ahead and have the attack happen on the other side. So here we've broken the other carbonyl bond to form our cyclic hemiacetal. Here's our oxygen in the middle. There's C1, that's our anomeric carbon. When we do this, Notice now that my hydroxyl on C1 is pointed down. Here's the plane. Okay, it's pointed down below the plane. My hydroxyl is down. This is the alpha anomer. So the difference between your alpha and your beta is simply which one of these carbonyl bonds did you break? That's muta rotation.